A frenzied mob awaited the arrival of the cake boss at the Good Food and Wine Show. Buddy Valestro organized a whistle stop in Johannesburg to promote his new bakeware range exclusive to Boardman's, plus the fourth season of The Next Great Baker on TLC DSTV Channel 172. I'm just very excited to be back here in South Africa. Last time I was here, you guys were so great and you made me feel at home, you made me feel like family. So I always thank my South African fans for always be coming out and loving and supporting me. And I love you back. That's why I'm back in Joburg. So thank you so much. Let's make the there must be a lot of pressure to use local ingredients when you travel to far-off destinations. We ask Buddy how he deals with this. Well, um, you know, whenever I travel anywhere, I always like to try the local favorites or the local things that they're using and you know when you travel you get to find so many hidden treasures and and things like that I'm sure that I'm going to be eating and tasting a lot of goodies the last time that I was here um, I did I don't remember what I ate but I remember I and they and it's funny because whenever I go somewhere whether I'm at a restaurant or um, a different country they want to feed me so there's like 20 different things that I got to eat and it's like, oh, taste, oh, taste, oh, taste. But um, definitely love to inspire from the local flair and flavor, you know, so um, I think it's important because you never know, one day we can have a bakery here in South Africa, right? Yeah! And if I was to ever open a bakery here, I would love to bring the traditions that we do in the States and what Carlos Bakery is famous for, but I would also love to marry in the local flair and favorites because uh, I think it's important to embrace that and see how you could combine them and um, make them even better. For those who live at high altitudes, Buddy gave some tips on just how to stop your fondant icing from cracking. Actually, for cake decorating, the higher the altitude is, the drier the climate, the harder it is. So like the fondant usually cracks very easily. And how do I know this? I know this firsthand because years ago I was in Denver. No, I was in Beaver Creek, Colorado, where, you know, it's very high altitude over there. And I was working with, you know, and I brought all my ingredients from home. But the minute it was in that, you know, atmosphere, it just didn't work. You know, so what, what, if you're using fondant here in, in a higher altitude, when you knead it in, I wouldn't knead it in with corn flour or sugar. I would knead it in with fat, vegetable shortening, so that it's going to give it a little more elasticity into the product. So for cake decorating, it's very tricky. And the one other thing that you have to be when you're in a high altitude is fast. So the faster you can roll that fondant out, blanket it over the cake, you have a less chance of it cracking and uh, being a little bit more cooperative. As far as, you know, with the baking, it's the same thing. It's either adjusting the oven um, a certain way, but I, I do tell you that some of the most important things, like I said earlier, is what your batter temperature is. Like, you know, th that you're always at between 65 and 72 degrees. That should be like your range. And usually if you're there and your oven is the right temperature, um, you know, then you should have a successful product. Whilst at the Good Food and Wine Show, Buddy assisted in icing and decorating a life-size rhino. We asked him about this. Um, you know, I, I'm an animal lover myself, you know, and um, the, the rhino and, and so many of these endangered animals are, are such beautiful animals. So to be able to help and give back is something special to me. Um, it, it's, it's cool because of the fact that anytime you make a big cake like that, especially with the rhino because they got that like rough skin, there's a lot of different textures. So when I go in and actually decorate the cake, it's going to look like I'm beating up the rhino because I'm going to be scratching and gnawing at it. This is really to make it look tough and, and, and skin. But, you know, I, I work with a lot of different organizations to bring out a lot of messages. And, you know, my parents taught me from a young age, it's in giving that we receive. And if I could use my popularity to help save the rhino or help make money to save the rhino. I mean, I'm all for it. I definitely, definitely am. You know, um, I never saw one in the wild, but, you know, I've seen plenty at the zoo and at um, Disney World to have them. 
So, you know, next time, next time we'll take on a safari. I think. Yeah, I, I, that's what I definitely want to do. My my children are really want to come as well. So, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where you have to give back and you have to always want to give back, and we always do. And I know that um, part of why I agreed to do it is because we're going to actually be cutting the cake up tomorrow and selling pieces of the cake, and we're going to actually take all the proceeds and give it back to help save the rhino. So um, that was part of why I wanted to do that, and I'm really proud to be part of that tomorrow.